Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church in Thomasville, North Carolina. Today is May the 8th, 2022. It is Mother's Day. And I want to thank all of you moms for coming to worship with us and everyone else to come and worship with us this morning. I want to especially thank those of you who are joining us virtually. And I want to make you aware that a bulletin has been posted to our Facebook page, our website. And if you're a, a part of our email distribution list, one has been sent to your inbox this morning so that you can participate in our worship service today. And um, those of you who are here in person, I want to thank you for joining us as well. And I want to make you aware of the, um, the insert in your bulletin. It is a uh, information card. You can uh, fill the information out on that if you'd like to, especially things that we need to be updated on. You can put today's date on there. You can put your name if you would like for us to track your attendance. And then also a little bit further down, if you want to put any new information like a new address, email address, phone number that you have, um, we will make sure that we update our records with that. And if you flip it over, you can also um, make us aware of any prayer concerns that you would like for us to be praying for you. We want to be able to pray for you, and we want to be able to pray for you properly. Um, this, this is a great opportunity to let us know how that can happen. And then a little bit further down on the very bottom of that piece of paper on the back, you'll also see Wednesday night dinner reservation place. And um, in order to be a part of our uh, Wednesday night meal, uh, we need to have reservations. And so all those reservations need to be in by tomorrow at 10 o'clock, Monday at 10 for our, for our Wednesday meal. And so um, you can do that. You can register for that, that meal by put, filling out the information on the bottom of that of this card and then this card can then go in the offering plate as it comes by a little bit later in the worship service and that way we can have all those prayer concerns updated contact information and reservations um, and we will make sure that that gets to the proper people so also there are a couple of announcements that i'd like to make you aware of first of all you may have noticed um, some soap sacks kits that have been made available to our congregation. Our Chicks with Sticks ministry, who, uh, may, who knit r lap robes and uh, prayer shawls, have kind of expanded their ability to, um, to reach out to our, to our community, and they want to invite you to be a part of it as well. And they have created these soap sack kits that um, can be created um, with, with instructions and everything. You just need to get the kit, and you'll, you'll, it'll make it clear on what you need to do. They can, uh, they, you can create these soap sacks in their little um, knitted uh, or crocheted uh, sacks, and a, a bar of soap can go in them, and they can be then distributed, uh, distributed to, um, to displaced people in our community. Um, and so make, make, a, make a soap sack and then bring it back to the church and we will make sure that it's distributed to the, to the community um, in the proper place. I think we're going to be using um, <coughs> Cooperative Community Ministry as a, as a source for that, but it's, a, a, um, it's, a way, it's sort of a washcloth and a bar of soap all in one and it's a, kind of a convenient way to get a bath. So please make note of that. And then also um, coming up, another outreach opportunity for you. Um, on Wednesday, May the 18th, we will be hosting, our, our missions committee will be hosting a Rise Against Hunger uh, meal packing event. And over in our, in Jarrett Hall, that night you can come in and uh, have our Wednesday night family fellowship meal and then go over to our Jarrett Hall where we will pack 10,000 meals that will be uh, um, sent out from, uh, for, through Rise Against Hunger and um, it's a great opportunity. If you haven't done it before, it's a lot of fun, it's a great experience. I hope that you will um, make a commitment to be there and be a part of that. And we need the extra hands. We wanna make sure we have enough people to get all those meals done. So um, it's, it's a great opportunity. So please come and be a part of that. And then finally, um, really quickly, you just need to be aware of it. I think this is in the bulletin as well. So please um, read through that, uh, through, through that um, section. But um, we are in the process of updating our pictorial directories. And so this fall, you may be getting a phone call about um, getting your picture taken for our pictorial directory. Please make note of that. But also, a little bit sooner than that, we, are, um, we have been using a, a, um, a, an app on our own for phones for our online presence um, 
called Instant Church Directory. And so in order to update um, that church directory a little bit, a little bit more regularly, <coughs> we are switching away from Instant Church Directory, and we're going to start using a product called Realm, which is directly tied to our church database. And so um, and they have an app as well for, for phones. And so this summer, we are going to be slowly switching over to that, and that will require you to sign up for a profile, and you'll get an email about that as time goes on. And then we will also have, um, uh, we will hope to offer like um, sessions where we can teach you how to use it and everything too. So get signed up for that. So um, be checking out your email. If you get something from the church, it means that, that you're, the process has started and that, that, was, that, that it's not a spam email or whatever. Just be checking on that and everything. So that's what we got going on. And then, uh, like I said, there's a little bit more information in your bulletin about that. At this time, I'd like to invite you to please rise as you're able for our call to worship, which can be found printed in your bulletins. We have come to worship God, the living God, who calls prophets and teachers to bear witness. We have come to praise God, the almighty God, who answers the forces of hatred and hurt with the power of grace. We have come to worship God, all gracious God, who comes to you and me to receive and carry the word of life and hope. All glory to God. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise, Rejoice, the Lord is King, found in your hymnals on page 715. our faith as printed in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, oh, sorry, forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please take a moment and share the peace of Christ with one another. Good morning, friends. Good morning. How are we today? To what's today? Mother, Mother got it on the first hit. Good job, guys. So it is Mother's Day today. And did you do anything special for mom yet? Yeah, what'd you do? Oh, took her to dinner last night. That sounds good. Well, how about a card? Did you make mom a card? No? Okay. Oh, you did get her breakfast. That's even better. Man, yeah. So I brought, I got a couple Mother's Day cards. And so I got one here that Paige got me. It says, Mom, you're appreciated and loved. And then inside it's got all these special words and it makes Mommy all teary. You know, that kind of thing. And then I got one here that Peyton made for me. Look at it. Does that look like me? Yeah, looks like me. Peyton made that. It says, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. And then it says, I love you, Mom. And look, there's me and Peyton at the bottom. Isn't that cute? <laughs> so, yeah, we, we're, it's Mother's Day, and we want to celebrate and appreciate all the women in our lives who 
are like mothers to us, whether they're our, our actual mom or someone who's like a mom to us. And I was thinking, you know, what, what, what are some, why, do we, why do we do Mother's Day? Any ideas? Yeah. Oh, yeah, so moms tuck you in at night, and they take care of you, and so you're celebrating all of those wonderful things. We love moms, don't we? They can be awesome. So, um, you know, I was thinking, there was a few years ago, there was this book out, and it was for the adults, and then they made a kid's version. It was called The Five Love Languages, okay? And so in that book, it talked about ways that people like to receive love, and some people like one way over another way. And so the first one is like words of affirmation. So like when you get those Mother's Day cards and they're all sentimental and, and all mushy inside, you know, they, people like words of affirmation. And then there's physical touch. So what would you think, how would you show love with a physical touch? Hug, hug yeah, giving a hug, right? Maybe even a high five, right? And so that might be go along with the word of affirmation, Mom, you're awesome, and a high five kind of thing. Okay, let's see. And another one here that we had. Um, oh, gosh. My brain's just gone dead again. I'm trying to think what the other ones were. Um, acts of service is one of them. Spending quality time together. Okay? And that last one's just escaping me right now. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting old, y'all. Getting really old. So, anyway, let's think about some of the ways. How can we show acts of service? Oh, receiving gifts. We like to get gifts, don't we? Yeah, receiving gifts was the last one. So I got some flowers today, too. So let's think about acts of service. How could we show love through acts of service? Can you think of something we could do for mom? Yeah, we'll take her to dinner. Breakfast in bed. Yeah, those are good things. To... Oh, yeah, hold an umbrella over her if, she's, if it's raining outside. Now, I'm going to mention something here that you probably aren't going to want to hear. How about keeping your room clean? Yeah, that's a way, it's an act of service, right? Keeping your room clean. Or how about listening to uh, directions and following directions when mom asks you to do something and you obey and do it, right? All of those are acts of service, too. So, yeah, we, those are ways that we can celebrate and, and show mom how we love her by giving gifts, acts of service, spending time with mom, uh, hugs and words of affirmation, all of those things. And you know what it tells us in the Bible? The Bible tells us that God loved us first, and therefore we should love others the way God loves us. And that's so important for us. And you know, we're, we're to be doers of the word and not just hearers of the word. So if God says, hey, I want you to love people, he means it, doesn't he? And there's all kinds of ways for us to be doers of the word, to do something and not just to watch the world go by. So let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you loved us first and that you show us how to love. So help us, Lord, to share your love with our moms and with others this week. Amen. All right, kiddos, you ready to go to Children's Church? All right. This time in our worship service, we come before God with our prayer concerns and our praises, and there are a couple that I would like to um, make you aware of. Um, certainly, being Mother's Day, we, um, we should be praying for our mothers and those, those women in our lives that are significant, that serve as mother figures in our lives, and um, um, yeah, so just keep those, those folks in your prayers. And then also... Um, we are, I, I'm excited to announce that um, Sadie Ann McCullough was born on May the 4th, um, 2022. Chris and Michaela's um, um, had, a, had a baby girl, and so we're really excited. We celebrate with them. I spoke to them last night. They are at home doing well and um, celebrating a Mother's Day for the very first time, that family. So um, we just, uh, we, we celebrate with them on the birth of their new child. So. Um, at this time, we'll give you a few moments of silence, and uh, you can lift up any concerns that you have on your hearts. God sees and God knows the concerns on your, on your heart, and uh, then I'll close this with a prayer. So if you will, please join me as we pray.
Almighty God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Our worship this morning is a sincere response to the perfect care and love that you provide for us, yet we so often take for granted. When we feel alone, you promise to be with us. When we feel hurt, you promise to restore us and heal our wounds. When, you, when we experience loss, you promise to comfort us. When we feel rejected and unloved, you claim us as your own and give us purpose. When our lives are, fi are filled with chaos and confusion, you promise to give us peace. You find a way to provide a warm, gentle, understanding presence in our lives that holds us and nurtures us and provides the love and grace that shapes us into the very persons that you have created us to be. Sometimes you are spiritually present in the still, small voice that we hear from the depths of our hearts, and sometimes you are physically present through the people that you have placed in our lives. Specifically, we take time today to honor those people we call our mothers. Mothers impact our lives in a variety of ways. Sometimes we learn from our mother's example, and sometimes we learn from our mother's mistakes. Sometimes we have grown stronger from a mother's support, and sometimes we have grown stronger from a mother's absence. Sometimes mothers have dried our tears, and sometimes mothers have been the source of those tears. For those of us who have been fortunate enough to have great mothers, we thank you and praise you because we are aware that not everyone is as blessed as we are. For all mothers, we understand the difficulty of this role and seek to extend the extra grace that is necessary for this significant relationship in our lives. Help us to appreciate those things that need to be appreciated and help us to forgive the things that need to be forgiven. On behalf of all parents, I pray this morning to give us clarity of our purpose as we venture into the unknown, understanding in loving little versions of ourselves, and wisdom in guiding reluctant and fiercely independent people. Then when we are just ready to throw up our hands, Help us to rest in the grace that before they belonged to us, they belonged to you. And the same love and grace that you have extended, extended to us will be granted to them as well. And as we pray for our children and for our mothers this morning, may we be ever reminded of the words that Jesus taught us as he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, as we prepare to return our tithes and offerings, I want to thank the United Methodist Women and the R.L. Pope Sunday School class for their scholarship programs. As we approach both high school and college graduation in the coming weeks, 
It's important to know that both of these groups sponsor a scholarship program that have benefited many students over the years. Deserving students from Memorial as well as the Thomasville community have received money from these scholarships and have been able to pursue a future with a reduced financial burden. And we are grateful for that opportunity. On behalf of the class of 2022, I want to thank those generous individuals who give to these scholarship funds throughout the year. We thank you. Now let us pray. Dear God, as we give these offerings and return these tithes, may they be used in such a way as to not only support Memorial Church and its members, but also increase the reach of these gifts so that your message of grace and love can be experienced by the entire community of Thomasville into every home, family, and individual. We make these offerings as a sacrifice to you and a sharing in your great work. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
may be seated. No life is such that when you think you have something figured out or when you're getting into a routine and you feel comfortable, things change, such as it is with the weather in North Carolina. You know, it's been warm. We think we've got it figured out, and Mother Nature says, watch this. So we were reminded this morning that we are yet alive. We're going to continue in our series, um, No More Spectators. Certainly a call to give ourselves to being disciples and being active and alive in our faith. But today I, I want us to um, think differently, thinking differently, which is uh, not an, uh, an easy thing to do. It could be intimidating to tell someone they needed to think differently, but I'll make some suggestions. A young man uh, had a, um, a sports car. He bought it with his own money, much to the chagrin of his parents, because he had a tendency to drive quite um, fast, and they were always reminding him to be very careful in the dangers of driving. And on one particular day, he was in the mountains, and uh, he was really kind of getting into going around the curves. And he was even thinking, you know, I know how to handle this car. I mean, I've been driving for, a, you know, maybe a year now. I've, I've got this thing figured out. And 
he's about to round the curve and he saw coming in his lane in his coming head on to him was a very large SUV and so he immediately went to the side in fact had to stop and as this car came around the curve in his lane the window was down on the the driver's side of that car and yelled out pig and he thought he heard what he heard and he said you know what I was minding my business I was doing what was right the guys in my lane calls me a pig he said I don't have to put up with this so he decided that he would follow this guy and see where he was going. And so as he pushed down on the accelerator and he went around the curve, immediately after he went around the curve, he hit a large pig that was in the road. Sometimes we need to think differently about situations. Hindsight is often 2020, but it's a job. It, it, it takes active attention to think differently about situations that go on in our lives. It's not easy to change our thinking. We're creatures of habit. We are in a, in a society, in a community that gives us various roles of parents and children and teachers and students, and we acquiesce to those roles, and we have certain expectations of things that are going to happen. We do realize that as we mature, our minds change. We begin to think differently about some things. We put our priorities in different places. And then there are those things in life that happen to us that shake up our world view. Some are so traumatic. Certainly things that break us out of a routine. And routines are comfortable. There's some comfort in knowing what's going to happen. We have routines for getting uh, ready for each day or, or our route to go to where we go and spend our time during the day. We know those routines. They make us comfortable. We almost go on autopilot because we don't have to think differently but when something happens it causes us to think differently and that's not something that we typically practice or exercise on our own the apostle paul in speaking to the church at rome and thus speaking to all of jesus followers after that had this concept that we need to think differently he said um, we we need to we need to think differently and and he said be transformed by the renewing of your minds that's what he said be transformed by thinking differently by renewing your minds and even though we hear that that's not always an easy thing to do but paul gives us some insight maybe into life that if we get set in one way of thinking, it's going to be a difficult journey to traverse for us. That we oftentimes have to, have to, to alter our thinking to think a little bit differently. This business of being a disciple of a follower of Christ requires that we think differently. That being a disciple makes us think differently. We think in a different way the thoughts of Christ and as much as we can and then we live differently and that's how the world will, will know who we are and ultimately know who Jesus is because of the way that we live but it begins with our thinking differently I want to read some scripture according to uh, the gospel of Luke chapter number 10 this is a, an opportunity this is a, a time when these followers of Jesus are going to have to begin to think differently. And here's what he says to them. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Do not take a purse or a bag or sandals and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If the head of the house loves peace and your peace will rest on that house. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you for workers deserve their wages do not move around 
from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is set before you, heal the sick who are there, and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me. Whoever rejects you rejects me. But whoever rejects me rejects him who sent me. The 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. This is God's word for God's people. Thanks be to God. Man, was their world about to change. This was kind of a... Uh, 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 an opportunity for their thinking to change if they were to make it in this business that Jesus had sent them into their thinking was going to have to change because you see they'd been hanging around with Jesus they'd been kind of in the shadows they'd been watching Jesus they were in the role they were comfortable Jesus was the teacher they were the followers Jesus was the leader they were the followers <clears throat> and so they were comfortable and now all of a sudden Jesus says okay it's your time to go. You've been trained. You know what you need to do. You have authority of heaven and earth. And I'm sending you out like the lambs among the wolves. Can you imagine what they must have thought? They'd, they'd been around Jesus. Everybody wanted to be around Jesus. He was doing good things for people. And people were coming to Jesus. And now all of a sudden, this image that Jesus is painting for them is not a pleasant one. I want you to go. And I want you to go and, and be my disciples. But you need to know there's going to be some bad characters out there. They're thinking had to change. It must have been an abrupt change of thinking because as many who start a new job, it's, it's, it's lots of fun and excitement and even the challenges aren't always that challenging. And then they enter into this business. They're turned loose, as we might say, to go into the world and to transform the world. They're given this responsibility of healing the sick and all kinds of things. I, I, the first day on the job, you might remember, or being given some new responsibility, everything changes. The thinking begins to change. As we're called, just as these 72 were and all since them, maybe it's good for us to, to give a little review of our thinking about some topics that are relevant and are important for us as we are God's people. I'm not talking about political topics. I'm talking about things that we sometimes take for granted, things that we get into a habit, into a routine of. So maybe we need to, to um, think differently about the church. Think differently about the church. The church is a place. It is absolutely a building. And I think many times when we refer to it, we say we're going to go to church or we refer to the church as, as a place. And it is indeed. But I think in order to, to live into this calling that God has given to us, we have to go more deeply and remember or at least recall or change our thinking that, that church is more than a place. We are the church. Someone has tried to help us know this by putting together these, these words a long time ago. I am the church. You are the church. So wherever we are, we are the church. So we don't always go to church, but we might take church wherever we are. You know, and, and it's awesome to have such a beautiful structure, a building and facilities in no way do we knock having a church, a place. It is a little intimidating to see Francis Asbury looking at me with a scornful look every Sunday morning. And of course, John Wesley, he's waving. But it's beautiful. It's wonderful to have a place. And there's lots of reasons to go to church. I mean, there's lots of reasons for us to have a place. Sociologically, there's lots of reasons. But more importantly... Church should be the place where this transformation of our mind begins. 
Just as Paul has called us to be transformed by the renewing of your minds, see church not only as a place, but also as a people, as something more powerful than just coming and, and seeing, but experiencing the very presence of God. You know, we, we come here, those of us regularly, we begin to recognize people. We have friends and family, and, and we're accused of being in a holy huddle because we're church broke. We know how to act when we come to church, and, and, and not as many people are going to church in these days as ever before in history. So there's more to church than simply a place. It is an essence. It is a kingdom that we have the great privilege of taking uh, to people, but being transformed. And, and the way I've understood the transformation of our thinking about church is we go from being a consumer put to a producer. We, we come into the life of faith as a consumer. We're, we're, we're taking it in and it's being provided for us. But then as God works in our hearts and our minds, then we become those who are providing for those who come after us. Another metaphor is going from being a member of, uh, being a passenger to a member of the crew. And if you think of that as on a plane, for example, if you're a passenger, the crew takes care of you. Well, in the life of the church, we who are here, when other people come in or we take the church to them, we provide what we know for them, but they're being transformed. And in God's economy, it matters not whether you're a consumer or a producer, there are blessings galore. So our thinking about church, about church, what is church? It is a place, but it is also an opportunity for transformation, for thinking differently. You know, when Jesus sent out those 72, he did not send them out with the directions, go to church. That's not what he said. There was no church to go to. They, they worshiped in homes and plazas, wherever they could. They were the church. And, and so we come to the church, and then we are the church. Another place I think thinking differently benefits us as we strive to be all that God has called us to be and to be <clears throat> his disciples is our thinking about other people. Our thinking about other people. In general, there's a story of a, of a, a mother who got onto a, a city bus and she had in her tow three young children, all who were walking, all who were very vivacious and very active. In fact, as she found her seat and she tried to corral her children, they were all over the bus. They were wrecking havoc. And finally, one person uh, said to her, Ma'am, you really should do something um, about your children. And the woman seemed to be distracted, of course, and, and have a lot going on. And she said, I'm sorry, what did you say? And, and, and again, this person said, you should do something about your children. They are out of control a bit. And the woman <clears throat> hesitated. And then her response, she said, you know, I'm, I'm very sorry that my children are, are acting this way. Um, I know that I should do something, she said, but I'm having trouble. She said, in fact, we're on the way to the hospital where my husband and their father has just had pretty extensive surgery, and the word that they tell us is he may not survive. And she said, so I'm just disheveled right now, and I, I really don't know what to do now, and I don't know what the future is going to hold. Well, wouldn't you have hated to have been the person that said something to her? You might not have said it, but you might have thought it. Certainly we've had those thoughts before in different places. But what if we think differently about people? What if we try to understand the situation that people are in? What if we cut people some slack, like the slack we hope they'll cut us? You know, there's the man holding the tiger by the tail gets twice the experience as the one watching. And I remember that. What if we think differently about people? Not how people can accommodate us, not how people can take care of us, or not what people have to use to benefit us, but how can, how can I benefit another person, or how can I serve another person? How do we see people? Do we see people differently? Do we, do we compare people? Thinking differently about how we see each individual will make us 
will make us more attuned to what God might have us to do and give us opportunities that are absolutely beyond our imagining, thinking differently about people. And finally, I hope that we would consider thinking differently about our role as disciples, about what God has called us to do. You see, Jesus did not come to this earth so that we would be better behaved or that we would um, uh, have our personalities tweaked or that he come to fine tune our manners or smooth out our rough spots. No, Jesus came that we might be transformed, that we might become a new creation. And as new creations, we might inhabit what would eventually become God's kingdom, where the rule of the day would be loving the Lord first and loving our neighbors as ourselves. That's what it means to be a disciple. You see, the God who does the, send, the saving also does the sending. The God who, who captures our lives, who redeems us, is the same God that sends us then into the world with this message of hope and good news. And the world needs this good news. In fact, we, we are in the presence of people every day, every day, who are hungering, who are thirsting for something. They may not be able to articulate it. They may not know it, but it may be a peace of mind. It may be able to live life with some hope. It might, it might be able to, to function with some assurance that in a crazy world, God is still in control. And no matter what's going on in their lives, God loves them. We, got, we, we have the great privilege of helping them to understand that it's a relationship with God that they need. And certainly being threatening in our offering is not going to get us very far. So it means coming alongside people where they are in their lives without judgment and offering to them only that which we know. We can only offer which we know. We can only tell the story of where God has been active and, alive, uh, and, and present in our lives. But people just don't know. Pay attention. People will tell you some amazing things, and you need not even ask them. It doesn't matter where you are. If you're in the, the lobby waiting for the oil to be changed in your car, or if you're in a checkout line, or the person who is is attending to you, checking you out. People will tell you things that they probably shouldn't. But pay attention because it could be the very cry that they need to know something about one who created them and one who loves them, who is Jesus. It's absolutely amazing the opportunities that God gives us to be his representatives, if only we'll take notice. Think differently about church, about other people, about your opportunities of serving God. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us your children. You have put people on our journeys that have crossed our paths, that have made a difference in our lives. Maybe our mothers, our fathers, maybe family members, maybe not. Maybe others who have influenced us in unlikely places. But we thank you for them. And God, what a great privilege it would be if you would give us the opportunity to come alongside your children, to offer them a word of hope or encouragement or, or a hand in doing whatever they need done. Thank you for those opportunities. Help us to see them and help us to respond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you, if you are able to stand as we sing our closing hymn, He Lives.
Thank you for your presence and your participation in worship today. There are lots of opportunities in the life of this church in the coming days for us to be together, to eat together, to study, to serve. I hope that you will uh, know that you're invited to anything that you know about that's going on in the life of this church. You'll give yourself to one or more of those opportunities as we become the church more and more clearly every day. Will you receive now this blessing and this benediction? May God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God be made real to you this moment and every moment of your life as you go out of this place to be His disciples. Be the light of Christ to those who need to know Him. Go in peace. Amen.